In this video, we're going to be installing these highway pegs from Ciro 3D. If you haven't seen these things yet and how they mount, you're going to want to stay tuned for this video because these things are pretty awesome. What's up everybody? My name is Andrew. This is my YouTube channel, Touring Midwest. This is my 2016 Harley Davidson Road Glide Ultra. Now this is an add-on that I've actually been wanting to do to my bike for a long time. So it's perfect that we get to do it for the Road Glide Refresh project this upgrade season. I think it's gonna be a pretty fun project. So let's get over to the tabletop, open up this box, see what comes inside, and then we'll get to the install. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. I'm pretty excited about this. One thing you'll notice is it shows chrome on the cover here, but check this out, gloss black. This is what we've got. Let's get this opened up. I don't know if there's any other brands or companies out there that are doing this this way of mounting, but if they are, I haven't seen it. All right, so we have her all opened up, and this is what you get. Ciro's full color instructions, as always, easy to follow. Uh, the diagrams are really well all the time. You don't even have to think about it because these instructions will walk you through the process. Anyways, this is what comes in the box, and it's not gonna install itself, so we, we better get over there. Eh? For this install, the tools I'll be using are a half inch ratchet, three inch extension, a 3 8 to half inch drive adapter, 3 8 drive ratchet, a couple various extensions possibly, a 9 16 wrench, a 7 16 wrench, 5 16 hex bit socket, and a 3 16 hex bit socket. Let's get over to the bike. All right, to get things started, we need to remove this pivot pin, as they call it, and this bolt, and this bolt. Just a note, I'm actually going to be using a hex key or an Allen key for this part rather than the aforementioned hex bit socket. Just gives me a little bit more room in here. For the next part, I found it easier to use the half inch drive wrench versus the 3 8 drive just because it's longer. It gives me a little more leverage. So I'll throw the extension on here, then the step down adapter, and then our 5 16 hex bit. You want to use the 9 16 box end wrench on the nut on the back here. This is loose now, so it can just be undone by hand. Then you can pull this out. You'll reuse the pivot pin, but you will not reuse this bracket. Now we need to remove this bolt. You will not reuse this one. Now we're going to install the Ciro mount, and I'm going to use that pin that we took out of here originally. I'm going to mount it to the floorboard first. You should have a torque wrench also for this. I do not own a torque wrench yet, but you need one in foot pounds and inch pounds for this project, or you should have. All right, once that's done, you can reinstall your long bolt that you took out. Put your nut back on the back side of that. Now, before I get that tightened up, we're gonna take one of our bolts from Ciro. This is the longest bolt in their kit. And it's also the largest thread. This is the thick, the 16 versus the fine thread of the 24. We're going to take the lock washer and a flat washer. 
and we can run that in. Now all your torque specs are in the instruction book, but like I said, I don't have a torque wrench, so I'm just going by feeling, I guess. I have no idea. Just kind of going on a wing and a prayer, actually, all right? And I didn't use Loctite. I know in Blacktop Devil's video, or Life on the Blacktop, their video, he did use Loctite on some of these bolts. I'm going to see how it goes. Again, wing and a prayer. Now, Ciro had bolts in these already. I'm not really sure why, because they sent bolts. So we're just going to back the one that they put in here out and we're going to take our mounting arm and that goes if we can get in here you'll see an indentation here and a little protrusion on the arm there's room to adjust this and then it and then it'll stop so we're just going to line that up and finger tighten our screw I do have a lock washer on the back side of this also. Not gonna snug that down quite yet. And then for the next part is our clevis, I believe they call this. And I think we're gonna do this one sorta of like this here. We take the short, the shortest bolt they sent us. And that's gonna go in from the back side here. And these are completely adjustable to suit how you want them but we need to have something to test it with. Now I do have foot pegs coming from Ciro, but they were on back order, so I haven't got them yet. So I'm just gonna use one that I had on the other highway, on my old highway pegs, so we can get things lined up. And if you've ever used these D-clips or whatever they're called, you know that it's kind of a pain in the butt to get everything lined up but not impossible all right now the fun part we get to actually try this out and see how we want to have it adjusted to best suit our comfort level all right now that we're seated on the bike we can get an idea of where we want these foot pegs and actually that's pretty good that actually feels really good. Such a nice place to have highway pegs rather than way out here where mine used to be. Right here is a much easier spot to reach, much more relaxed. And it's kind of nice because you can go from this foot position to this foot position to this foot position and you could even rest your feet up here if you wanted to like so I really love the frame mounted design and I'm pretty comfortable with that so I'm going to tighten everything up and I think I think that's our new highway peg set up all right those are already tight so we just basically need to snug this down This one should already be pretty snug. And I think that'll do it. Super solid. I mean, the highway mount does not even move. I'm literally moving the entire bike. What do you guys think about the Ciro frame mounted highway peg mounts? I think they are awesome. Uh, I'm really excited about having them on the bike. Now I do have Ciro's twin rail footboards coming to put on there and I think they're really going to finish it off and make it look really nice because they're black as well. They're just not here yet and I wanted to get these installed. So I'll make another video about those. It'll be a short one because it's foot pegs but I think it's important to show it. And I'm going to have links to the frame mounted highway pegs and the twin rail footboards down in the description as well. I am gonna get you guys some shots of the frame mounted highway pegs on the bike in just a second, but I wanted to touch base on something else. It might be a question because it was a question in my mind. I had already installed the 
frame mounted highway pegs on the left side of the motorcycle because I wanted to get a little taste of how it was going to be for the video. And there's just not much room on that side of the bike in my garage anyways because there's a wall in the way. Really need to do away with that wall, push everything out a little bit further, make this garage about twice as wide as it really is and we'd be good. It brings up a really good question that I had that you may have and I'm going to show you over on the bike right now. This is the hard side of the bike to work on because it's super low, so trying to get any kind of video for you guys is tough. This bolt and this bolt are the two that you need to remove. Now, obviously this is the kickstand right here, so that might make you nervous. I left it on the kickstand. I had absolutely no problems at all. For the time that it takes to install this bracket, this was perfectly secure. So removing this bolt and this bolt with the bike on the kickstand is absolutely no problem. I had, I had no issues with that. So there you go. All right, good, we got that sorted. Just so you know, I just wanted to, I just thought it was worth mentioning because I did think about that. <laughs> like, do I really wanna be undoing bolts for the kickstand with the bike leaning towards me? Not really sure. But I don't have a bike lift or anything in this garage, so. You have to work with what you've got. It don't say anything in the instructions from Ciro about making sure that your bike's on a lift or anything like that, or a bike stand or anything. So I just rolled with it carefully, <laughs> but I did, and it was perfectly fine. So that's gonna do it for this video, you guys. Until next time, have a good one. Stay safe out there as always, and we'll catch you in the next video from Touring Midwest.